South Carolina was back in the headlines last week when the Confederate flag was removed from the State House grounds in Columbia. And of course, it's been four weeks now since the tragedy at Mother Emanuel AME Church. In this special edition of Quentin's Post Ups, I speak exclusively with Port Laureate Marjorie Wentworth. Marjorie, the last time I actually saw you was two weeks ago in front of Mother Emanuel. That's right. And since that time, uh, living history happened. I know, I can't believe it still. I have to go to Columbia and see it. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that because, as you know, last Friday, the controversial Confederate flag was removed from the South Carolina State House grounds. I'm wondering where are you emotional with that? Well, I actually was here working and somebody texted me or something and said it was happening. I mean, I knew it was going to happen Friday. It didn't yeah. dawn on me it was going to happen that Friday scene. at 10 yeah. a.m. I don't know what you were doing, Either but work. I was in my car and I download it, you could watch it on Yahoo yeah. Live. Yeah. Yahoo. Right. Yahoo Live. Sure. And I just sat in my car and watched it and cried. Wow. And then I didn't know what I felt about that. And then later on I was communicating with Reverend Nelson Rivers oh, yes. and he um, talked about his kids seeing him cry for the yeah. first time. He sent me a picture wow. of himself. So I thought, well I guess, you know, a lot of people were crying that wow. day. Um, I thought it was I the ceremony and the gravity with which it was handled seemed appropriate and it was short and I loved the roar of the crowd around and, and the chants and um, I wish I'd been there. I heard it was like hundred and ten degrees. Wow. Um, but I thought um, I thought it was great to take action that quickly. And speaking and, of which, let's know. talk about the Confederate flag because, as you know, some of the photos of the alleged shooter were um, focused on the Confederate flag mainly because he had pictures of it in the background right. of those photos. And as you know, he wanted to start a race war, but it ended up in unity. Well, yes and no. I mean, I think that people are saying that, but I also think that the whole incident opened up the issue of race. Um, the idea that, I mean, people, everyone was shocked that this happened, but given a lot of the racial hatred that you hear on certain talk radio, um, the prejudice that still exists, the disparity in our culture, I mean, really? What, I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying I wasn't surprised, I was mortified, I fell over when I heard what happened at Ema Mother Emanuel, but I think that in, yes, there's been unity in our community, sure. and, 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 which is amazing and has a lot to do with the AME Church and the actions of the families right. in terms of forgiveness, sure. but it's also opened up the reality you know, it, this exists. This is a 21-year-old kid. He did not pop out of a pee and do this. I mean, he, things influence him. Forces in our culture influence him. Things on the internet influenced him. I don't know much about his personal life, but who knows? It's out there. So I think it also, at the same time, brought up issues that people want to act like they're not there. So I don't know where that leaves us, but I see both things happen. So in other words, you're basically saying this is just the beginning. Right, and even the flag coming down is a, it's a symbol, but what action is going to follow in terms of um, the issues in our, in our, let's just talk about our town, let alone our state, let alone our country, um, the issues that are tied to that, yeah. that have to do with, um, you know, um, racial, racial issues in terms of disparity, um, a lot of the things that Senator Pinckney was trying to change. So, you know, for example, um, James Clyburn, who you know, right. I love, is my hero. You said that the last uh, time. Well, he read my poem into the Congressional Record, right, which right. is a great honor, perhaps the greatest of my life. And, um, you know, I read an article, for example, that he's trying to get Governor Haley to accept the, the federal Medicaid funding, which has already been allocated for our state. Um, and, you know, those dollars go to people who, you know, you have to be really broke to get Medicaid. You have to have real issues and you're unemployed and, you know, what have you. I mean, um, and these are people who, you know, many of them are, are African Americans in a community that, that in Jasper County that Senator Pinckney represented. I mean, I think I read a quarter of that population lives below the poverty line and these were the things that mattered to him. 
and I saw the governor's statement, just same old party line, no, you know, Medicaid's bad, Obamacare's bad, it's bad for the state. Well, what, how is it bad for the state? Explain that to me. Um, so, you know, to me, action has to follow. Um, I was very upset about the school board decision. Um, the woman who was appointed may very well be the most qualified. Um, it, it was sort of, they slid it in, you know, the week that everybody else was coming together as a community and mourning. Uh, why would they do that? You know, a lot, we know that we have issues with the schools. So let's see what happens. I just think you got to put your money, money where your mouth is. Let's go back to Senator Clemente Pinkney for a second because this Excuse is all, me. yeah, no worries. A lot of people didn't know who he was. I didn't interview him, unfortunately, for Clinton's Full Subs, but he was a great guy. He served this community well, as you mentioned. Tell me, when you think of Clemente Pinckney, what goes to your mind? Well, I think he uh, was somebody who got into politics because he wanted to serve right. in the truest sense. I mean, somebody who's called to the ministry at the age of 13. I believe so. Which is just extraordinary. Yes. But he's very much following in the AME tradition, which from what I know, has a larger sense of being involved with sure. the community throughout its history. Um, you know, you don't just, it's, you, you minister to your people in your flock, in your church community, but also the larger community. And, you know, it's right across from Charleston County, you know, the Charleston County schools. Um, and he was very concerned about social justice issues. I think the day I saw you, I was doing an event for the Brady campaign, right. and he was the one who tried to get some of their gun restrictions passed by the South Carolina Senate and House. He's the one who um, got the um, body, body camera right. um, legislation passed. So, right. he, you know, he cared about these things deeply. And, um, you know, I think it was, I, I, don't, I don't think he drew a line in the sand between his work with his congregation and his work um, as a senator. I think it, it was just this, this sense of community service, sure. which... You know, very few people have. Um, if we all had that sense of community service, the world would be a better place. But he embodied everything that's good. Um, you know, he was obviously a loving dad and husband, um, and um, you know, a saint among us. Um, and you know, the idea that he worked all day and then stayed at that Bible study. I mean, what kind of person is that? Think about that. That is a person who, who really walks the walk, who yeah. really practices what they preach. Right. And I think that 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 the best way to honor him is to consider the issues that matter to him and do something about it. And you are a poet, poet laureate, that is. How would you, dis what poem would you write for the Emmanuel Nine? <laughs> Tough questions. Uh, well, I wrote the poem Holy City for the paper right, 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 right after it happened, right. trying to think about the words that we needed to hear on the Sunday following the shooting. Right. I mean, I knew that that's when they were doing it. And I thought they did a beautiful job at presenting oh, yeah. um, the whole, you know, situation with the... Pamela Roses. The, the, right. I mm -hmm. mean, the whole it was just beautifully... They kind of saw it in their minds. Do you think you have some... Well, of course, you know, I was able to do something. Um, but I think that, that you could almost write a different... Anyone could, could write a different piece, whether it's a poem or a song yeah. or a story or an article. Yeah. Um, for every stage of this, and I mean, you know, between the, the shock of the incident and the oh, immediate yeah. grief, right. and then the funerals, right. and now the church itself has to rebuild, oh, yes. um, and it's had to rebuild Before. literally and metaphorically many times, yeah. um, right from the beginning, right. really. Um, I just found out, interestingly enough, after the Denmark VC insurrection, right. it was burned to the ground, right. as we all know, but not everyone else knows, right. by the way. Um, when it was finally rebuilt, his son was the one who had it rebuilt. Mm -hmm. I just read that, which is really interesting to me. Yes, like, how, why don't we know that? Right. Um, but I think now, with uh, you know, the, I know Nikki Finney uh, wrote yes. this amazing, uh, it's kind of like a prose poem, sure. about the flag coming down, and um, which, I mean, no one will ever top that. It's just made the top of my head come off. Um, but I think we're just going to keep seeing poems. And I think, you know, now I think a poem would be about, if, 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 if I would, had to write another one right now, I think it would be about rebuilding. Um, and, and how is the church itself going to, um, you know, honor the memories of these people, right. um, 
keep everything going, yes. build that into their kind of the psyche of, of how they operate. Right. I think thus far, I mean, Reverend Goff just like stepped into place yeah. like amazing. I yes, mean, he did. Amazing man. Um, physically, also, the building oh, yeah. has to have, I mean, there's termites, you know, over. all the old churches downtown. Sure. Um, suffer from huge, uh, you know, just the wear and tear, yeah, right. and um, and of course there's, you know, bullet holes in the walls, Still. and and um, you know what do you do about that? And you know, um, I think there was an article in the paper this week that addressed right. that, right. Uh, and I think that's the stage we're at now. And um, I think you know you don't just know what to do. I mean, fortunately in this community, people have known what to do, and it's been amazing. But now we have a duty to hold it together and keep keep working together yes. and keep, you know, somehow honoring the privacy of these families sure. while making sure that everyone has what they need. Yeah. Um, you know, there's the short term and the long term. Um, and then also to, to, you know, we're called to behave differently. We're called to... Um, pay attention to one another, to care for one another, to notice when, when you know, when someone says something or something that might be a racist thing or makes a judgment, okay. you you call them to that. I mean, I have never defriended more people on Facebook than I have in the last few weeks. Wow. Um, I'm very comfortable with that. Uh, you know, um, you are not allowed right now to to. Um, I'll, I don't know, it's a big topic, but uh, to say anything racist to, or judgmental. You know, uh, people who don't live here uh, said things to me that were shocking when they, the video of Walter Scott's killer emerged and, oh, they caught him, now everything's fine. I'm like, what do you not understand? Not everything is fine. You don't, you did you see what I'm saying? Um, why? Did something like that happen in the first place? Um, of course, now the body cameras are in place. Uh, but no, there's a lot, much larger issues at stake. When you watch the video yeah. of that, for example, right. the way that officer acted was like it was a mundane thing that he did all the time. That was the part that was particularly terrifying to me. Um, the fact that he thought he could do it, like it was just, uh, you know. That's something we got to stop and think about. There, sure. There's much larger issues. Sure. Sure. So I think that's our responsibility now to, to uh, call a racist a racist, to someone, you know, that stuff about the flag, heritage, yeah, heritage to have the right to own slaves. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've said that to many people. They don't like that. Well, that's what it is. Um, so that's where we're at right now. And with that, you know, Port Laureate, Mar Marjorie Wentworth, it's always good talking to you. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Love what you do. Thank you. When are we going to see you on national news? <laughs>